Yes. We are glad to have you. Samuel, um, we're going to start the live stream and you can um uh, start to admit. Okay. Goodbye, me. So the twins are in their 40s, and the grandkids are all teens and older.
Good evening and welcome everyone. So glad that you're here with us. And you know, we are gonna be doing our career event. Or this is our career day event. So I hope that you guys um will enjoy the, our company as we find out a little bit more about career and how it is that you can benefit from some of the information that we have here. So whether it is that you have a job already or it is that you'd want to have a side job, you know, or whether you don't want to start your own business and have it as an additional income, you're essentially at the right spot where you can get more information around what it is that the community has to offer. Yeah. So these are our objectives. Now, we are a community of developers, the, the community of persons in the field in computer science, whether it is that you're interested in doing AI, whether it is you're interested in doing web development, whether it is that you're interested in doing mobile development, this is essentially the place for you. We're, we're giving persons the opportunity to market their skills, an opportunity to share and grow in your knowledge base, and of course, get online and in-person help. So if it is that you're having an issue with a problem, maybe in terms of how oh, it is that you have designed a solution, chances are there's someone here in the community that can essentially help you or guide you, or even have some suggestions on how it is that you can change or pivot to make your solution even better. So what is the real problem that we're facing? Communities, you know, we are an ecosystem and for companies to find developers, this is essential. This is essentially a good place that you can go and find developers. It's an opportunity for, for us to share in our skills. It's also an area where we can bring some awareness to the different products and services that are out there and essentially what it is that we have. So if it is that you would want to go fast, you can go by yourself. But if it is that you want to go for a long period, it's best to go with a community. One, we can help each other to, to grow, to continue the journey. If it is that we may falter, we essentially have someone there to pick us up. So enjoy the benefits of being a part of this community as we solve problems together. So it's what we'll be doing today, we'll be going through a quick discussion because it's really, really simple how it is that you can start your own business. As I said before, whether it is that this business that you're going to be starting is going to be a side project that's going to assist with your income, or whether it is that you want to transition into a, a business, um, you know, leaving your regular nine to five, we're hoping that this is an opportunity for you to get some insight into how this can be achieved. So we'll be having a little discussion, followed which I'm going to be introducing the speaker and he's going to be going into his presentation around an opportunity where it is that we can get some capital for your business, All right? There's a competition. So be on the lookout for it, be attentive as possible. And then of course, during the presentation, there's gonna be some discussion, question and answer, whether it is that you want to have some more information about our speaker or the, or the competition that he's, he's gonna be telling us more about. And of course, he's gonna be joined with some guests to assist him with, you know, bringing across this information as best as possible to you guys. And in the end, we'll do our wrap-up. All right. So how do you start a business? What do I really need? The reality is, as we pursue our degrees, as we do our certification, there's an, op there's an opportunity here for us to use the knowledge and skills that we've gained to start our business. There's some of us who may be having challenges finding the dream job that we would like 
in this specific career of computer science. Perhaps we recognize that we are great at web development, but the career path that we have, it, the job that we have currently requires us to work in AI or work on mobile development. This doesn't stop us from actually having our own job, our own company, where we essentially we can still pursue the dreams that we have. But of course, in order to start this company, you at least need to identify a problem, problem in which you can solve. After which, you're going to need to create a formal business plan. And of course, you need to get connected with the right people. Now, Outside of all of that, there's going to be some administrative work that, that is required, you know, in terms of registering your company, um, buying assets, if it is that you're going to need assets to develop the solution, etc. even maybe even a workspace. But we're going to, of course, go back to connecting with the right people shortly. Outside of that, we will definitely need to market our product. Now, there are actually many opportunities out there. So we may think that the, the environment is not conducive for business, for creating your own business, but that's in fact not true. So there are companies such as PSOG, the private sector organization of Jamaica, they actually offer mentorship they give you access to current economic research data. So if, if it is that you would like to, to know how it is that your product will operate in the market, whether it is that someone is actually interested or looking forward to creating rockets, for example, or robotics, you, there's data that they can assist you with. We actually also have Jampro, right? And they have a growing IT ecosystem program they also have a growing commercial space. So if it is that you're starting your own business and you just want a little office space, just where you could work from periodically, essentially there are programs out there. So we have so far PSOG, we have Jampro, we even have Jamaica Business Development Center. All right, so there are opportunities out there and we are all technology, savvy person. So if it is that we want to find information, the internet is there. Um, we have communities um, out there of different persons. You know, we have the Jamaica Artificial Intelligence Association, some of which those members are in fact business owners. We have Jamaican developers community. Some of our members are in fact business owners. So essentially, you just need to connect with the right person to of course guide you and help you along the way. Now there is a challenge. Yes, you have a great idea and you want to build this solution, right? But there's a big problem. There's some amount of capital required. Capital required to, whether it is to buy the latest MacBook, whether it is to buy the robotic arm that you need to build your project or your solution around. Essentially, money is an issue. Now, there are, in fact, solutions to every problem. So we are all computer scientists. So of course, we need to recognize that with every problem, there is a solution. Now, we do have loans from companies like NCB, JMMB, but we actually also have hackathons. We have venture capital competitions where it is that you can join these competitions and win prizes. And that's, in fact, one of, what our speaker is going to be speaking to us about, a venture capital competition that is, that we're, it's actually going to, the entry fees, the entry period is going to be closing soon, but of course we'll get to that in a little bit. And outside of that, there are in fact grants, grant opportunities available. So you may not necessarily have the capital right now, but that doesn't necessarily, that should not be the reason you don't seize an opportunity to create a marvelous solution because we have a lot of problems and we have a lot of developers, a lot of computer scientists graduating um, year after year. 
So it's around time we start to fix some of these problems. And you know the problems are right around us. So without further ado, we're actually going, we're going to be, I'm going to be introducing our speaker and um, his team that will be joining us on this discussion as we unearth some ways in which we can raise capital. So Craig is a technology product manager, right? Social scientist and university teacher. He has been in the field of technology and creating businesses, creating opportunities. So this is essentially a very good person to listen to, a very good person to follow, right? He has made a career out of defining hard social problems, productizing cutting edge technology to create a new options, new opportunities to essentially solve problems. He is a country researcher for the Global Index for our responsibility, responsible, sorry, artificial intelligence, the lead researcher for Jamaica Digital Media and Information Literacy Policy Framework, and a tenured faculty member in the Mona School of Business and Management at the University of Mona, University of the West Indies Mona. So, Essentially, this, this fellow, he's, he's been around for, uh, for a while and he has been making waves both in the management of business as well as technology. So you guys are ready for some very valuable information as how it is that you can gain some capital. Craig, over to you. Thanks a lot, Alden. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here this evening, to be able to, to share with the members of the Jamaica Developers Association. Um, the immediate opportunity that I want to share as uh, that Alden hinted at is called the Yui Vincent Hosang um, Venture, uh, New Venture, entrepreneurship program. So this program has been around since 2002 and it is open to all UWI students and faculty members. Uh, we've had winners from uh, um, all, all the faculties so far or almost all the faculties. Certainly we've had lots of winners from the Faculty of Science and Technology at UWI. Uh, we've had uh, winners from um, other faculties as well. But of course, we're, we're technologists, so these are the persons we're most concerned with. Now, um, as a, a lifelong technologist myself, as, as Alden mentioned, I am particularly interested in um, members of this group um, entering the competition. The, the deadline is October 18, and we have with us uh, Tamar, sorry, Tamra, who is the, the coordinator. The program is run out of the Mona School of Business and Management, um, but uh, it, it is very much um, open to, to um, computer science students. And um, I believe that uh, you will find what Tamara has to say uh, very interesting about it. But before, before I let Tamara um, speak to the details, let me share just uh, very briefly, um, a one slide presentation on this because we like to uh, get straight to the point. So the this venture competition, the top prize is $400,000. Um, the second prize is 300,000 and the third prize is 200,000. There are other prizes. Um, the total winnings are in excess of a million dollars, uh, Jamaican. Um, but I think even more valuable is the opportunity to the, the winners get to go to the tri-state area, uh, New York, New Jersey, um, and meet Caribbean entrepreneurs there who can help you to scale your business. Uh, one of the challenges that we have here in the Caribbean um, is that the, the, our market size is very small. So all of the English speaking Caribbean is only about 5.2 million people. 
that's um, you know about half the size of New York City. Um, so we it, it is other Caribbean entrepreneurs have found that being able to to jump to the U.S. gives you access not just to much more um, readily available capital, but also scale, which which is essential. Um, you know, local entrepreneurs who've made it big, like some of you probably know Gordon Swaby, um, CEO of Edufocal, who he's uh, beginning to set up shop in, in Nigeria. He's established a bank account there and he's eager to expand because um, that kind of access to a large market is, is essential. One of the defining features of, of technology of our business is that um, the once you've created your software product, then it's it becomes it's relatively easy to scale compared to, for example, the manufacturing business or, or other business like agriculture um, or, or even tourism, even in terms of, in terms of services, of course, you, you have overheads that will expand with your markets. But even so, one of the, what has made technology, what has made information technology one of the fastest growing economic sector in the last um, 30 years, uh, in fact, nearly 40 years now, um, is the low cost of scaling relative to other economic sectors. Um, now, so that opportunity to meet these Caribbean entrepreneurs, I think is huge. Additionally, this year for the first time, there is a, a partnership with RevUp. Now RevUp is run by Sandra Glasgow. <laughs> and uh, Sandra Glasgow has, um, she created the first um, accelerator, no, not accelerator, university, um, incubator over at UTech nearly 30 years ago. Um, but more important for the present time, Sandra runs RevUp, which is the startup accelerator that funnels persons into First Angels. Now, First Angels is the most prominent angel investor group in Jamaica with um, persons like uh, Joseph Matalon and um, the, the, the FACI Commodity Group, um, JMMB, all the big names that you can think of um, are members of the First Angels Group. So that's that's how you'll get money when um, you need to scale your business. So participating in this competition, um, I think, is you know a, a great leg up um, that that wasn't available um, to any previous year. This is the for me the most exciting year um, in the more than twenty years of of the competition's existence because of this new new partnership. Um, you'll also extraordinarily valuable uh, mentorship will be available to you um, from about October 19, which is the day after um, the, the deadline. So you need to enter by October 18. And as of October 19, we'll begin to peer you, peer the, the, the teams can be up to five people at a time. Um, and we'll begin to peer you with uh, business people across Jamaica. Um, so if, for example, you, um, your business um, at the AI hackathon uh, two Saturdays ago, there were persons who were interested in, in security. For example, they could be paired with persons with um, executives working for, for guardsmen or for other um, security companies. If you're in the agricultural space, you could be paired with, um, we, we have mentors who would be available to you from, from Grace Kennedy. In fact, a long time coach, not coach, a long time judge of the competition, was uh, uh, one of the, the senior executives at Grace Kennedy and so on. So this kind of mentorship gives you, you know, the, the know who, the network, the contacts, I'm, I'm sure you're well aware are, are critical to being able to, to survive and, and to make it as, as an entrepreneur. Um, now, uh, Tamara knows the prerequisites even better than me, but I'll, I'll just tell you what I know and then invite her to come in and, and say what I've left out. You have... Uh, 80% of teams in the past have been made up of just one person. So a solopreneur is fine, uh, but you can have up to five team members. Um, and, and the team must include a current UWI student or faculty member. And, and for the pictures, um, I'm, I'm sorry for those of you who are not current U.S. student or faculty members, but we're, we'd ask you to stay out of the pictures. You know, the branding is important. And uh, this is uh, one of the current requirements of the sponsorship that we have available to you. And the, the venture must be, relatively new um, or, or nascent. It, it could be that all you have is a great idea. Um, so um, I was very excited to um, attend the, the AI Hackathon two Saturdays ago. 
um, where Alden and O'Shane were present and, and people like Matthew Stone and, and, um, and Bennett were there and I uh, heard lots of great ideas. And those ideas um, would be a shoe in for, for this competition in, in my view. Um, now, Alden, if it's, if it's okay, uh, I'd like to invite um, uh, Tamra, who I think has signed in as VHEP, to, to fill in the many gaps I may have left out. Okay, hey, let me just see if I can get her to be one of the co-hosts so she can um, also present her screen. Just a second. <laughs> Tamara, are you hearing us? Are you able to unmute? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. <clears throat> and I really, I think Craig covered it, you know, so. Um, But you can go ahead. I'll just show them the timeline. Okay, great. Um, yes, I think the timeline would be critical. Um, so as um, I will stop sharing my screen and that will allow you to share yours. Sure. Yep. Wow, one second. I recognize uh, Cleon Mullings. Cleon, good to see you. Afternoon, Craig. Good to see you as well. So we were just seeing your screen, but it has gone black. Yeah, because I was just gonna go to presentation mode. I don't know why. Oh. What happened? All right, it's okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oops. All right, my Zoom is doing something else because I think it's it's recording a meeting I just had before this. So it might be at the time. Hold on. Just see if it will. Yeah. 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 Yes. Seen? Yeah, we're seen. All right. I wanted to go into presentation mode, but I'm just gonna go through it like this because I tried to do that so it didn't work. Um right. So good evening, everyone. My name is Tamara. I'm the coordinator for the Vincent Hosang Entrepreneurship Program slash UE Vincent Hosang Venture Competition. Um, Craig already spoke to all the benefits of the program, et cetera. So I'm just going to take you through the timeline. So right here, we launched, we launched last week, Wednesday. After we launch, right, um, applications close on the 18th of October. For October 18 and October 20, we that's that's your preparation period. So we match you with a mentor, whether you're a one person team or five persons, right? And they will help you to develop your business model can canvas slash executive summary slash business model, business um plan, right? So you have the business model canvas, business plan slash your executive summary. And I'm just saying it like that because as Craig mentioned, you don't actually have to have a business. It could just be an idea. We're open to all ideas because we understand that ideas are diamonds in a rough and um, you know, we don't want to miss out on any great opportunities that might may come from that, that idea. So once you apply, the deadline is October 18. October 18 through 20 is a preparation period where you'll also go through a series of capacity building business development boot camps. And those boot camps will be brought to you um, online, so virtually, right? From industry experts, thought leaders in the business community. Um, Craig mentioned our partnership with RevUp. So that's really going to strengthen our offering in that regard. Um, and even outside of the RevUp partnership, 
we've had some strong relationships in that regard with Sajikor. We'd have one of their um, CEO of the Cayman Islands, et cetera, you know, do some of our boot camps and another um, industry leader, Wayne Beecher, do the finance boot camp. And then we have a corporate social responsibility boot camp, et cetera. So you go through a series of capacity building um, or development boot camps during the October through November period. Then after that, we'll, we'll assess all the teams, et cetera, and go through our semifinals round. So the semifinals takes place, I'm just putting it here, November 22nd through the 23rd. It's usually a two-day period. So those dates could be the 23rd, 24th, 24th, 25th, et cetera, depending on you know, where, the, where the days lie. Um, and after that, we usually have, out of that, we, we have 10 finalists. So we usually start with like 100 or plus applicants, which we're trying to double this year. So please let your friends know about it, your fellow students, faculty, researchers. Um, and then we'll come to half the cohort, right, or applicants for the semifinals. And by the time we get to the finals, um, we have about 10 finalists. So at the end of November, so the preparation period, October through November, at the end of November, we'll have the semifinals. And then after that, you have an additional two months. So December, because we we go on break, through January to prepare for the finals, which takes place at the end of January. The finals, the results, everything, your presentation or your pitch, and the decisions, the results are made on the same day. So it's a... You know, it's it's quite a long day, but very exciting and invigorating. And you're sitting at, on the edge of your seats because you want to see wins and other presentations, etc. So um, your presentations, your ideas are confidential. That's, as Craig mentioned, you know, this competition has been going on for over 20 years. And so that's just, you know, ingrained in who we are. And, and that's just understood. So... Um, yeah, so once you apply now, you go through the boot, boot camp sessions, then you break. Well, well, then we have the semifinals. We choose the 10 finalists, and then you have basically a six week period to prepare for the finals, which will take place at the end of January. I don't know if there are any other questions. Just well, a minute again. I, I, Sorry, at the moment, I'm actually not seeing any questions in the chat. Um, Oshane, are you seeing any questions from YouTube on your side? No, no, I do not. Okay, thank you so much. So, Tam, Tamara. Sorry, uh, I have a question, um, if I might. Uh, sure. Tamara, is it the case that our, our community is pretty tight knit? Suppose um, you know two of the team members are from UTech or are not even students anymore. Um, can that team, as long as they have a UWI student, can that team still end up? Yes, Craig, I love that question. And thank you so much for that question. The, the answer is yes, a resounding yes. So, because we understand mm -hmm. and we encourage collaborations, you know? It's, this is not just a UE thing. It's just that, um, yeah, we, you have to have a benefit to going to UE, to the University of the West Indies, right? So that's your benefit. But as, as Craig is the question, to answer the question, um, no, Craig, you don't have to be, or I should say, yes, you can enter the competition, even if your other fellow team members are from other schools. It's just that in terms of the, the optics of it. So applying one. So for the demographic information, we wouldn't want their information because they're not a U.S. student, right? They wouldn't be able to say which faculty they're in. Two, in terms of presenting to the judges, we, we want only U and Mona students. So you could have a team with you alone as a U and Mona student and four of you go to UTech, no problem. But just know that you, Tamara, I'll be the sole presenter. And, and that's how you'd matriculate into the, the program. So 
we will be dealing with directly with you. Any PR opportunities would, would be with the UE student, not the entire team, right? Um, so just to clarify that, but so we encourage you, even if you're one UE student and the other four are from NCU, UCC, et cetera, that's no problem. We promote collaboration. It's just that for this competition, and in terms of our funding, it's specific to UE Monas. So, so you could have a UE, um, you could have a Western campus um, teammate too, you know. But that person, because they're Western campus, even though they're a, Mona, a UE student, we would only want the UE Mona student to be present in the, so we can say this is a UE Mona student. But we wouldn't want to rob you of the opportunity of the team to, to enter the competition because you're collaborating. I mean, and, and again, as I said, we, that's something we encourage. Yeah, and if, if you don't mind me saying so, Tamara, uh, this is not a very strange situation. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, to access funding from the United States, um, it is not unusual that you have a front man who, or, or woman, who meets certain requirements and other members of the team take a back seat uh, because you know that's how you access the funding. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so it, it's just par for the course. Um, also, I, I think it's important that we emphasize that faculty members can be members of teams. So um, UWI faculty members, um, and I, I remember Adrian Dunkley, who most of you probably know is um, has his own AI company has volunteered to be a, a mentor, um, and this this competition is a great way not just to become an entrepreneur but to become an innovator. It's it's a way to enter um, the innovation space in Jamaica um, and uh, develop your innovation skills. Whether you use those innovation skills to build your own company now or you use them in, um, let's say you get a job with, with Sajikor or NCD or, or any IT company, Simtai um, and so on, you can use those innovation skills in those firms. And then eventually uh, when you think you're ready, um, you can then use those muscles to build your own innovation company, um, to build your own entrepreneurship outfit. Um, and you are able, you're eligible to enter this competition multiple years, right? As long as you remain a UWI student or you have a team member who is a UWI student, you can keep entering the competition. Um, and, and we think and there are people who have won multiple years. Um, so it's, uh, I think it's a great opportunity. And I do hope that uh, every, a, lot, a lot of you here will, you know, take advantage of it. Yeah, Craig, and, you know, I think that's a great point that you made that you can, you know, it's open to undergraduates and graduate students in terms of stu students. So you're right. You may have entered in your freshman year, your sophomore year. And by the time you reach your last year, and like right now we have a team that's about to graduate, but they want to enter. And guess what? We're going to allow them to enter because they're very much eligible because they're UE Mono students right now, even though they're about to graduate in November. But the idea is going to come through before they graduate, you know, and um, in terms of connectivity, I think that's something that we always take for, we take for granted, but this is going to get you in the room in front of the persons that you need to get in front of. We, we mentioned RevUp, but it's actually a RevUp slash NCB partnership. So, you know, you're in front of the decision makers, influencers in the in the business realm right um and so that connectivity and networking that the competition brings is definitely a value to me that is um it's invaluable actually so okay right so i i, I don't mean to put anybody on the spot but i'd love to see the hands of those who are are thinking about entering Am I, I don't think I, I have the right view. I'm not seeing the hands go up. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see any hands either. 
I think, right, well, I, guess... I think this may have caught them by surprise. I think some of them are still thinking it over and, and what, are, what are the options they have in terms of which um, you as student they need to get in contact with or mm. if it is that they, they can just go ahead with their idea themselves. But um, but just can, to... can I just say, I'm so sorry, just real quick again, it's free to enter, no strings attached. Um, it's a very hands-on experience. Um, Craig has been an entrant, so he knows, and he spoke to that. Open to anybody that's registered at UE Mona, right? Um, and, you know, we are here to help to drive your dreams to bring your ideas to life so again you don't have to have an existing business it could just be an idea and i i think that you know i know that there's someone in this group that has an idea and i encourage you to just you know step out step out on on, on a, i don't even want to say faith step out on a ue block and i'm um, challenge us and be that 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 person that story that we can tell and say yes yeah, man, we, you know, we did this thing. I mean, we have many stories to tell, you know, but challenge us. You know, we're saying we're here to help. We're saying no strings attached. It's free to enter. We're giving you money for your business. We're going to help you from pre-incubation to incubation, then through acceleration. Challenge us. Take us up on our, you know, let us see if our, you know, our word is our bond. Right? And I would just, that's what I would leave you all with tonight, this evening. Um, I do have a question um, shown in the course material um, because I remember when I um, went to the launch session last week um, and this is something that we want, I want you guys to touch on like um, during the course, um, uh, like some of the things that you would touch on, especially like um, going through the proposition based on the idea um, or you help to identify customer channel based on their, their value or in customer segment. Um, one of the big, uh, two major things that um, were mentioned a lot last week was um, the business model canvas, as well as knowing when to pivot. So considering that this is a recording and we do have like um, a means to reach out to students uh, from the university. Can you touch on those two important points um, before we wrap up? All right, so I'll, I'll start and if Craig wants to jump in. Right, so, so that's what I'm saying to you that we are in the business of not only bringing your ideas to life, but cutting down on those costly mistakes that startups make that we all know, right? I mean, we, we, we don't even have to Google it. We know because we, we all, you know, us in the room may have tried it before. Or we know somebody and said, boy, it's hard, you know? And so that's what we're saying. That's the value that we bring is that we can give it an expertise to say, all right, you know, is this is this business viable, etc. Um, so in terms of building out your, your business model canvas, that's that's what we're here for. And that's why we're saying you don't even have to have um a, an existing business or business plan, just the idea. And we will walk you through the business planning slash model, um, business model canvas, developing that. Um, and, and a key component, as you mentioned, would be to have a minimum viable product, to do some validation, et cetera. But even before you get to that stage, you know, we want to say, hey, you have an idea. Um, we had a group last year, they wanted to do some garbage collection. And we're like, all right, the government bringing in their 50 garbage trucks, you know, et cetera, et cetera. This is a very cash, it, it's a costly business. So you're gonna have to have the money upfront to even buy the trucks. Do you have the money? What's the plan for that? You know? And they were like, oh, um, well, you know, we were just thinking about a community thing. Okay, a community thing, but if you only have one truck, you can only do so much, you know? So from that perspective, you know, we're not about killing dreams or making sure that the dreams make sense. And I think that's where a lot of the value where we come in. And um, in terms of validation and the business model canvas, 
we we give you it's hand holding we walk you through that process you know and so again that's where our value comes in Craig if you have anything else to add I'm guessing you're having some I technical have dropped off, but I don't know if the student has any uh, follow up to, to what he Craig. I, oh, oh, he's there. OK. Yeah, he's here. He's just having uh, his mic is just having some challenges. I mean, uh, Shane, you have a follow up to what I just said? Um, well, not necessarily. Um, I think you went in depth and answer um, quite a lot. Um, the, one of the things I like at the event, I wondered about like after the event, um, what type of support do um someone get? Because you know, a lot of time incubators are in competition, you know, uh, people win competitions and then the idea or so forth just, you know, not necessarily ends there, but not much happen afterwards yes, and i think so if you want to touch on that that yes, would be great thank you well. Jean, that's a, an excellent question actually excellent excellent question and um my apologies well i think i touched on it but i didn't really go into detail with it so when i mentioned earlier that even if you're not a part of the competition we still want to provide that support because that's a part of shoring up the entrepreneurial ecosystem even within the university right so yes after there's a lot of support we have a, a, a program called the leading edge accelerator program so it's called the acronym is leap but what we found um is that we our strength really lies in a pre-incubation pro process right in 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 terms of getting you to that next level However, right, which, so to answer your question, yes. So I realized that after the, after the competition, you know, we want to take you through that process so you can get to the incubation stage, not acceleration stage, because we hear incubation, acceleration, I think sometimes you don't really understand what it means. So from where we are at UE, it's pre-incubation to incubation. And that's where, right, that's where, and, but even though we're pre-incubation to incubation, we have the resources and we'll, we will be the bridge to get you to the acceleration. And that's why Craig spoke up a lot about the angel investors and angel don you know, donors, et cetera. So yes, we don't plan to just leave you, right? This is not just a competition on a record where, you know, you have the competition, you win money and they will take pictures and put it in the paper and oh, you will give away money and that's it. No, 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 no. We, a big, a huge part of our story is what happens to you after. And we're very invested in that. And we've actually gotten more money from our, our, our partners this year for that specific thing. So it's an excellent question and yes, we're not just gonna let you go after the competition. You're gonna be with us as long as you embrace us, you know? Yeah, all the way to the top. We have, um, what's it called? Natty platforms. They, and one-on-one um, -on -one and others that have actually, um, you know, they're on the, the junior stock exchange and other alums like Himala Bennett, who is a you know a leader in her field in terms of movie and film production and music production? So yeah, great question, Ashane. And yeah, we're not gonna leave you. We will be here here with you because we want to be a part of a million dollar story. You know, remember Dr. Matt Bean mentioned that you know he wants a billion dollar companies, right? Yeah. So we want to be. We want to say, boy, you know, we help them, right, to get to that to the, get to that point. Yeah. Right. So essentially, this would be a great opportunity for, for anyone um, to you know, make a breakthrough in any in industry. As you mentioned just now, they're one of the winners um, actually is now in production of movie and music and, you know, entertainment. So 
regardless of, of where it is that your passion lies within the use of technology, there is an opportunity here for you to excel, for you to learn and grow in, in any area that it is that you want to, to excel in. Because the, 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 the knowledge that you would be given in this program as a participant, it's not going to be useless knowledge. It's going to be something where um, you can make a difference in whether it is to actually start your own company, um, winning monetary prizes, whether it is even joining a company um, to work uh, with, on, on an executive level, because essentially you would now understand how it is that a business operates, how it is to position for um, growth, getting customers, marketing, et cetera. So um, excellent, excellent presentation, Tamara and Craig. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, if we have um, just uh, two minutes, I'd love to share just this one slide um, that speaks specifically to some of the concerns that um, I think we as technologists have um, that are relevant, not just to um, this competition, but to innovation um, on a whole. Um, that is, we have uh, great ideas as technologists. We have solutions, right? This is you know, what we learn when, when we learn to program or, or we learn um, networking or sysadmin. Um, but um, these solutions by themselves um, don't necessarily, um, are not necessarily um, going to make a lot of money. They're not necessarily viable as, as businesses. Uh, and in fact, they may not even be a good fit to the problem. So um, one of the things that was when I attended the hackathon two Saturdays ago, the AI hackathon, um, I saw lots of um, our members with great ideas, but I kept thinking to myself, what is the problem? What is the real problem that they're solving here? Um, and so I think it's important that we emphasize that technical mastery is important because um, one of the things I mentioned to, to, to Bennett um, at that same event, you know, Jamaica imports an enormous amount of software. It's enormously disproportionate to our economy. And, and one of the reasons for that may be because we have, we have quite a number of multinationals, multinational corporations headquartered in Jamaica, and they're all using imported software. Even UWI, you know, uses an enormous amount of imported software. Um, so money is being spent um, in the area, but rarely is it that it's Jamaican firms that are making the money um, on these, um, on the software and different technological solutions. But we, what this tells us is that we have global competitors, so we do need to be on the cutting edge. But technical mastery is not enough because many, technolo many technology buyers in Jamaica don't have deep technical smarts. And what they're buying is, uh, I like to say, they're buying quarter inch holes rather than drills. This is you know, from product marketing. Uh, it's this, this idea that someone goes into a, a hardware store and you know, they're faced with a whole wall full of drills and they're like, okay, so which drill am I gonna buy? They're not an expert in drills. What they really want is a, is a quarter inch hole in their wall to, to, to stick something in to hang up a, a, a picture frame, right? Um, and in, in Jamaica, this is rampant in the technology sector. There are lots of people who, you know, they don't know the, the difference between um, Azure cloud services versus AWS cloud services versus Google cloud services. They're, they're just going to buy whoever sells them, um, gives them the better sales feel. Um, and therefore, the, the question is, so what do we as Jamaicans do, right, when we find ourselves uh, in this kind of situation? Um, and the answer to, to my mind is that you, we need to speak the language of the problem domain rather than the solution domain. So don't talk to people about cloud services. Explain to them how, I mean, the primary benefit of the cloud is that you get to connect your 
applications, disparate applications and weave them together as one fabric, right? That is a major benefit of the cloud um, and, and so on. So you, you, you speak to the problems that they have um, and you speak in their language. That's one. Now, as someone who has lived in Jamaica, our advantage, your advantage as technologists is access to deep contextual knowledge of the jobs to be done. And hopefully um, you've heard of the jobs to be done framework. It's extraordinarily valuable. Um, and it's, it's um, especially for, for um, us as technologists because this came out of the technology space. Um, and all, your first job as a competitor is to find this thing called problem solution fit. So you, you want to create a, a, a solution that uses, uses face detection or facial recognition or natural language processing. That's, that's the solution domain. But you got to understand the problem domain very well. So how do you gain a deep understanding of the problem domain? So we all know you're going to start with desk research. You're going to use Google, ChatGPT, YouTube, Reddit, Hacker Noon, and so on. That's a good start, but it's only a start. You need to talk to the broadest range of stakeholders in the entire ecosystem that you can get access to. Listen for what they think the weaknesses in the ecosystem are. And you'll know you're well on the way when you develop a well-organized scheme of how the domain works, right? Uh, you, you know how the money flows. You know what the constraints in the domain are. You know who the talent in the domain, wh where is the talent going to, how is knowledge produced in the domain. And you know the people who matter in the domain. Who is it that writes the checks? Who is it that's um, the CIO? Who is the network administrator? Um, and finally, so you, you aren't, when you aren't hearing anything new from each person you speak to, you've, you've achieved what we call intellectual saturation. This is when you know, okay, I now know the domain. And you will know which problems in the domain are solved and which problems are not solved. Um, at that point, you can then begin to say, okay, so there are these solutions I've learned about, whether on my own, whether I'm self-taught, I learned it in a degree program or wherever I learned it. How do they map to these particular problems? Now, I'd love to go into a case study, but I know we don't have time, right? But if, if there's another opportunity, I'd love to talk about case studies in, in agriculture, for example, um, because you know agriculture is one of the largest employers in, in the country. Um, and, and I've worked with um, different groups in the agriculture space, just one of the, the areas I've done consulting in. But I wanna respect your time. You guys have been very generous and, um, Thank you very much. I'd love to answer any questions that you have. Yeah. So at the moment, actually not seeing any questions because essentially you actually have been very clear, um, both you and Tamara, and we will be sharing the contact information, of course, um, the link to join to enter the competition. It's in the chat. And um, if it is that you'd want to reach out to us, we will definitely um, pass on the information to you guys, um, Craig, if it is that we have participants. And so let me just quickly share. Okay, thank you very much. Right. So um, one of the things that we were speaking about um, earlier was the fact that we actually um, there was a hackathon um, September 23rd, and we essentially want to congratulate Jaguar, which um, is our first place winner, Quizlab, who came second, and Quizlab actually was the smallest had the smallest team in the competition and they managed to come second. So it's not about the size, it's not about um, essentially what 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 your environment is is showing is how it's about you and how your ability to to go out there and and dominate. So essentially you do have Jaguar, Islam and data acrobats as our winners and um, they were pre um, presented with with money you know so once you have your ideas, once you have uh, your business opportunity, so now it's uh, he. By all means, we recognize capital is an issue. Training and mentorship is an issue. Um, this competition essentially solves those problems for you. All right, and of course, our email address. If it is that you'd like to participate in our demo days, if it is that you'd like to participate in our career days, 
is that you have some questions for um, Craig. Craig, feel free to send us an email at community at caribbean.dev, all right? And you, of course, know how to find us, how to connect with our community. Our community is constantly growing. Feel free to connect with us as we you know, share upcoming events. You know, you can follow, uh, you can be an up a part of the know we have meetup.com we are on meetup.com so and you have our email you have our youtube feel free to connect with us thank you our presenters tamra and craig and thank you our participants for being here being being allowing us to edify you so find those problems solve them enter the competitions let us move Jamaica from a consumer of technology to a producer of technology. Okay. That is it for today. Have a great evening, guys.